every reserve duty that we start, start with a black coffee, you know? And that's the, the drink of reserve service, black coffee. If you don't drink black coffee, then don't come to reserve duty. We zijn net buiten Jeruzalem in de bossen waar ik met twee reservisten heb afgesproken die een omstreden stap hebben genomen. I've never imagined that I will find myself one day, especially not as a 50-year-old guy, going to the streets for demonstration and protest every week. Hij en 10.000 andere reservisten doen mee met de massademonstraties. En dat is in Israël nog nooit eerder voorgekomen. What we are facing these days in Israel is something that you could never imagine that will happen, you know, a threat, a real threat. Um, on our democracy, actually. They call it a reform, I call it a cop. This is one, probably the darkest night of Israel ever. Toen de regering Netanyahu vier maanden geleden de omstreden plannen bekendmaakte om macht weg te halen bij het Hoge Rechtshof, begonnen Oren en Jaron een WhatsApp-groep voor reservisten, die al snel uitgroeide tot een enorme protestbeweging. And as we usually called to protect Israel from outside, now we are protecting Israel from an inside enemy. So it's exactly like reserve duty, only the enemy is a little bit different. We zijn erbij als ze in alle vroegte het hoofdbureau van de Israëlische politie bestormen. Het is een van de vele onaangekondigde demonstraties die ze nog steeds door het hele land doen. This is our weapon. This is the only weapon we are using in our protest, a megaphone. That's what I'm using in the last few weeks. De reservisten zijn bij elke demonstratie te herkennen aan hun groene shirts. They are shouting busha busha, which means uh, shame, shame, shame. And the big shame is that the Israeli government has a minister that is a convicted person, eight times convicted. And he's on, he's on charge on the police, the Israeli police. That is the big shame. And that's the reason we are standing here. We all swore to serve in a country which is both uh, Jewish and democratic. Okay, that's the basic uh, contract we have between a soldier and the country. And we all swore to serve the, the kingdom, not the king. And trying, you know, to change the rules of the games, that's what they are trying to do, is like, you know, uh, fracturing the, the unwritten contract. And that's something that we will not let. Dat er nog steeds zoveel gedemonstreerd wordt is opvallend. Officieel is er op dit moment in Israël een rustpauze of een adempauze. Maar daar merk je weinig van, want de rust waarop werd gehoopt, die is nog niet echt teruggekeerd. Nog steeds gaan wekelijks tienduizenden mensen hier de straat op en soms zelfs meerdere keren per week. Unless we will be sure that our democracy is defended and that we are changing things, we will not go back home. Maar dat zij zich als militairen uitspreken valt niet bij iedereen goed. The fact that you are a reservist has nothing to do with your political views. When you come to the army, you leave politics outside. Deze oud-generaal kijkt vol afschuw toe hoe zijn reservisten nu de straat op gaan. I joined the army in 1987, you know, and 30 years all the way to 2017. I never encountered such a, such a case. En volgens hem komt door de deelname van de reservisten zelfs de veiligheid van Israël in gevaar. You know, uh, you, you look at Nasrallah or the Iranians. They have all this theory about Israel being a spider's web, a weak society. And when they see this uh, phenomena, they say, you see, we are, we are right, they are weak. And if we are weak, maybe this is the moment and this is the time to attack Israel. And indeed, we saw in this Passover... Uh, the attack from Lebanon, from Gaza, even from Syria. And this is uh, what worries me, that this might bring Israel on the verge of war. Some people say you're bringing the military into politics. I understand this. Uh, it is okay. We are not forcing someone to do something that he doesn't want to do, actually. We served all these years while it was Netanyahu or any other. I was not always happy with what I did. But uh, that's part of the contract. And I'm sure that uh, if they will pass these laws, people will not serve. So for us to say these things was a very, very, very difficult. Um, and hopefully we will not have to implement, you know, our threat. I really hope. For now it helped because you can see that the legislation actually was frozen, stopped for now. I think that one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that it would stop is because the, the, the reservists have uh, stand, 
have stand again in the front line saying not anymore. Morgen viert Israël 75 jaar onafhankelijkheid. Maar hoe de toekomst van het land eruit ziet is onzekerder dan ooit. They thought they can pass the laws and until we react it will be already done like happened in other countries uh, and it will be too late. Once they control the Supreme Court they can run all the rest. As I'm saying always 75 years in history is not more than one page actually. <laughs> so at least I want that the uh, this book will have much more pages of great history for Israel as a as a democratic state and I'm sure that that's what we are doing. We are defending our state. That's the reason we are saying reserve service actually.